Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Ms. Danielson, and today we're looking at adding and subtracting integer values and non-integer values. Let's get started. First of all, types of numbers, because the textbook seems to keep getting this wrong. Integers are not just positive and negative numbers. They are positive or negative whole numbers, including zero. Integers do not include fractions or decimals. Rational numbers, on the other hand, are any whole or fractional number, including zero. So that's all possible values, really. Here's some examples of rational numbers. What makes these rational numbers is that they could all be expressed as a fraction. Now, I know what you're thinking here. These whole numbers, how do we write them as a fraction? Well, 12, for example, could be written as a fraction of 12 over 1. Because we know a fraction just means the top is being divided by the bottom, and 12 divided by 1 is 12. Negative 11, we could write as a fraction as well as negative 11 over 1. Or let's get interesting here. Negative 22 divided by 2 would also give me negative 11. So that could also be written as a fraction. Zero, how could zero be written as a fraction? Well, zero could be divided by any number and the value would still be zero. So, for example, zero divided by seven. Negative 0 0.5. I hope we know this decimal value very well by now. It's a negative fraction. And you should know that negative 0 0.5 is the same thing as negative a half. Negative eight, again, we could write it as negative eight over one. Or how about 40 divided by negative five? If we do a positive number divided by a negative number, the answer will end up negative. So this clears up a bit of a confusion that a lot of people have about negative fractions. Look over here, I had negative 11 and I wrote it as a negative number divided by a positive number. That gives us a negative answer, which is negative 11. For this next negative fraction, I wrote 0 0.5 is the same thing as a half, but I want negative 0 0.5, so I put negative a half. And then the last way that I could write a negative fraction is I could show that it's a positive number divided by a negative number, which will result in a negative answer, negative 8. So it really doesn't matter if your negative sign is at the bottom of your fraction in the denominator, or at the top of your fraction in the numerator, or in front of your fraction. All three of these rational numbers are negative rational numbers. Next on to 2.5, we could write that as 5 divided by 2, that gives us 2.5. And negative 0 0.3 recurring, I would actually prefer to write this as a fraction, because other than writing this little dot on top of the 3 to show that it's recurring, I can't write this decimal correctly. So let me write it as a fraction. Negative 0 0.3 recurring is the same thing as negative 1 third. Try it on your calculator if you don't believe me. So now that we are clear on what integers and rational numbers are. Let's just have a look at what the textbook seems to think they are. This is not the first time I've seen our textbooks misuse the word integers. Sometimes they use integers to refer to whole numbers, and sometimes they use integers to refer to positive or negative numbers. Now we know that integers must be whole numbers, which are either positive, negative, or zero. So examples one to five do refer to adding and subtracting integer values. However, you will see examples like this in your textbook as well, where we're clearly not adding and subtracting integer values, we're adding and subtracting positive and negative rational values, that is values that could be decimal values. Now don't go ahead and start this right now, because we need to go through the theory. Put that calculator away, we are not using calculators today. Each of these questions has got values in brackets which are being added or subtracted. Now those brackets are not mathematically necessary, but as you can see, without those brackets, it looks a little bit unclear and messy. The brackets help to show me that I'm adding or subtracting either a positive number or a negative number with another positive number or negative number. Without those brackets, it looks like kind of a bit of a mess. First of all, I'm thinking there are way too many plus and minus signs here. So to add or subtract positive or negative rational values or integers, first we need to sort out whether we need to add or subtract. 
when there are too many plus or minus signs. Now, I hope you know all of your plus or minus rules from primary, but if you don't, let's go through them quickly again. Just a quick, easy way to remember it. If the signs are the same, we add. So if I'm adding a positive number, I'm adding. If I'm subtracting a negative number, I'm adding. If the signs are different or opposite, we'll subtract. So if I'm adding a negative number, we'll drop the plus and minus sign. We'll just put a minus sign there and we'll subtract. If I'm subtracting a positive number, let's get rid of that minus and plus sign and just put a minus there and subtract. So same signs add, different side subtract. Here's some examples. I can try and get rid of this double sign here. I've got a positive and a negative. A positive and negative, those signs are opposite. I'm going to subtract. Here I've got a positive and a positive. The signs are the same. I'm going to add. Here I've got a negative and a negative. The signs are the same. I'm going to add. And here I've got a negative and a positive. The signs are opposite. So I'm going to subtract. So I could write this a bit simpler. My first step, am I going to add or subtract? In this first case, I'm starting with a positive number and I'm subtracting 2.1 from there. My second one, I'm starting with a negative number and I'm adding from there. Next one, I'm starting with a positive number and I'm adding to that. And here I'm starting with a negative number and I'm subtracting from there. Notice I never change the sign of the first value in the calculation. If it was positive, it stays positive. What I might change is the operation that I perform on it. Will I add or subtract? Next, step two. How do I calculate? Without considering the plus or minus signs, I'm going to just look at the absolute values to begin with. The absolute value of any number is its distance from zero in either direction. So let me show you this on a number line. This means that although they have opposite signs, negative 7 and positive 7 have the same absolute value because they're the same distance from zero. See negative 7's distance from zero? See positive 7's distance from zero? These are the same. So now that we know what absolute values is, it's the number without the sign, just the value of that number. Let's consider how to calculate either addition or subtraction of positive or negative numbers by focusing on those absolute values. First of all, if you're starting with a positive number and you need to add to that number, you should already be able to decide if your answer will be positive or negative. If you start with a positive and you add to it, is there any way that that answer is going to end up negative? No, your answer will always be positive. The next thing you need to do is just add those absolute values. Because your answer is not just going to be positive, it's going to be more positive. So add the value that you started with to the value you're adding on and find out how positive altogether. Hopefully that makes logical sense. But let's show you with an example just to be sure. From our examples A, B, C, D before, example C shows us a positive number which we need to subtract a negative from. A double negative, when the signs are the same, we should know that that means to add. So I'm starting with positive 0 0.7 and I'm adding 3.9 to that. Let's see this on a number line. So if I start with positive 0 0.7, which is about here, and I add 3.9 to that, what I need to do is continue into the positive direction, so I'm adding my absolute values 0 0.7 plus 3.9, and that takes me up here to 4.6. Positive 4.6, because of course adding a number to a positive number can only make that number more positive. Definitely positive and definitely a bigger absolute value. What about if we start with a negative number and we subtract from it? Well, the sign would have to be negative. There is no way you can turn a negative number into a positive number by subtracting more away from it. So the sign will always remain negative in this case. What about the operation we're going to do? Will it be more negative or less negative? If you have a negative number and you subtract from it, it's going to get more negative 
So ignoring the signs, we add our absolute values because the distance from zero in the negative direction is getting greater. Hopefully that sunk in. Let's show you with an example. From our examples A, B, C, D before, example D started with a negative value and we are subtracting a positive value from it. When we subtract a positive value, the signs are different. We are going to subtract. We may as well say negative 0 0.1 minus 2.8. So starting with a negative, we're subtracting away from it. It's going to get more negative. But let me prove that to you on this number line. Starting with negative 0 0.1, which is over here. I'm starting at negative 0.1 and I'm subtracting 2.8 from that. So I'm going into the negative direction, another 2.8. That's going to take me all the way down to negative 2.9. Think about your absolute values, 0.1 away from 0 and an extra 2.8 away from 0 in that same negative direction takes us to negative 2.9. Moving along now, what about when we start with a negative number? and we are going to add to that negative number. Now the signs take a little bit more thought. Will the answer definitely be negative or definitely be positive? It depends on the absolute values. The sign for the answer will match the sign of the larger absolute value. So if we started with a really large negative number and we add a small positive to that, that won't be enough to take that negative number up past zero into the positives. So it would remain negative. If we start with a small negative number and we add a big positive number to that, that's going to take us up into the positives. Let's look at the operations we're going to do now. If you're thinking of you're starting with a negative and you're adding to it, you're moving in the opposite direction from what you started from. So we're going to subtract the absolute values. And generally, when we're subtracting values, it's easiest to do the biggest absolute value minus the smallest absolute value, and then just put the sign that you decided on in the first part of a step. So other examples, A, B, C, D. Example B showed us a negative value, which we are adding a positive value to. Plusing a plus, the signs are the same. We are going to add. Now let me show you this on a number line. We are starting with a negative number, negative 2.4, and we are adding 3.5 to that. Which is bigger as an absolute value, 2.4 or 3.5? I'm hoping you're thinking 3.5. 3.5 is definitely a bigger absolute value than 2.4. That means the bigger of the values is the positive value, so my answer is going to end up being positive. But the mental calculation we're doing is a subtraction. Because although I started down here at negative 2.4, I'm moving in the opposite direction, undoing this value all the way past zero up to a positive number that I'm going to reach. So I'm doing 3.5 minus 2.4, which gives me 1.1 on the positive side, because the bigger absolute value was positive. Let's try this the other way around. What if I start with a positive number and I subtract from it? The thinking should still be the same here. Whether our answer is positive or negative depends on which of the absolute values are bigger. If you have a bigger positive absolute value, your answer will be positive. If you have a bigger negative absolute value, your answer will be negative. And again, the operation that we're going to be doing, because we're going in opposite directions with these two values, is subtracting. Generally easiest, biggest number minus the smallest number, and then put the appropriate sign. So once again, let's show you an example for this. Positive 4.3. That's a positive number, and I'm adding negative 2.1 to that. Adding a negative, the signs are different. That's the same as a subtraction. So that's positive 4.3 minus 2.1. Showing this on a number line, I'm starting with a positive number, 
positive 4.3, and I'm going to take away 2.1 from that. But before I do that, which one is the bigger absolute value? 4.3 or 2.1? I'm hoping you're thinking 4.3 because that's definitely bigger than 2.1. That means our bigger value is the positive value. Our answer is going to remain positive. So I'm doing the calculation, bigger minus smaller, 4.3 minus 2.1, and I can see that takes me from up here at 4.3 all the way down to 2.2, positive 2.2, because the bigger of the absolute values was positive. Take a moment now to go over these four examples carefully. Take notes. Make sure you understand before we move on. Time to get some practice now. Adding and subtracting. These aren't integer values, guys. Questions 1 to 5, yes, are. But questions 6 to 10 are not. So you might want to write as your title, adding and subtracting positive and negative rational numbers. Go ahead and hit pause now. Remember, no calculators. First decide, are we going to add or are we going to subtract? Then decide, is my answer going to be positive or is my answer going to be negative? Then decide, do I add my absolute values or do I subtract my absolute values? Hit pause now and hit play when you're ready to take up the answers. I hope you had a chance to hit pause. Here come your answers. First, I hope you correctly chose whether you would add or subtract. Next, I hope you've decided on whether your answer will be positive or negative, and you went ahead and did that calculation. So for number one, a positive number plus a number is going to be positive, and 8 plus 3 is positive 11. Number two, a negative number plus a number. The negative number is bigger. My answer will be negative, but let's do the subtraction. 6 minus 2 is 4, but negative 4. Next, I'm starting with a negative and I'm subtracting from it. My answer will definitely be negative, but I'll just add my two absolute values to see how negative. 5 plus 3 is 8, so I'll make it negative 8. Question 4, I'm starting with a negative and I'm adding to it. So, what will the sign be? The negative number is the bigger one, so my sign will be negative. Now let's do a subtraction. 8 minus 7 is 1. But I said my answer is negative, so it's negative 1. Next, I've got a positive number, and I'm subtracting from it. Which absolute value is bigger? 9 is clearly bigger than positive 3, so my answer will be negative. But I'm going to do a subtraction to find the absolute value of my answer. 9 minus 3 is 6, but I said it would be negative because the negative number is bigger, negative 6. Next, on to our rational numbers. Starting with a positive 1.3 and subtracting 5.2 from it, will my answer be positive or negative? 5.2 is bigger than 1.3, so my answer will be negative. Let's do the subtraction the easiest way we can. Bigger absolute value minus smaller absolute value, 5.2 minus 1.3 is 3.9, but the 5.2 was bigger, the negative one was bigger, so our answer is negative. Question 7, again I start with a positive and I'm subtracting from it. Which one's the bigger absolute value? 8.8, .8, that's the negative one, so my answer is negative. Still, I'm going to subtract the smaller value taken from the bigger value, so 8.8 .8 take away 6.4 is 2.4. And I said it would be negative, so that's negative 2.4. Next, I've got a positive 6.3 plus 8.6. So it should be obvious my answer will stay positive. It will just get more positive. 6.3 plus 8.6, positive 14.9. Next, I've got negative 6.4, and I'm adding 9.9 .9 to it. Will my answer be positive or negative? The bigger value is positive. So my answer will be positive. Still, I'm going to do this subtraction of 9.9 .9 minus 6.4 in my head. And that is 3.5. 
positive 3.5. Last one, I've got a negative number, negative 4.8, and I'm subtracting from it. My answer, hopefully this is obvious now, will be more negative. So I've got a negative answer, but I'm going to add my absolute values together to see how negative it will be. 4.8 plus 2 is 6.8, so it's gotten more negative, it's now negative 6.8. Now I hope you found this lesson and this practice helpful. I'm willing to bet that the majority of you got into this lesson thinking this is going to be easy and realize that it's actually quite challenging sometimes. There's a lot of thinking involved. I hope I managed to help you think, so let me know what you thought about it. And if I've left anything at all unclear, you'll leave me a comment down in the comment box below so I can clarify that for you. Otherwise, till next time, keep practicing and I'll see you soon.